हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू सिंथेसिस आईएएस एकेडमी ए प्लेस वेयर ब्लेंड ऑफ आइडियाज डू टेक प्लेस अबाउट मी एंड संदीप भूषण थुमला एंड आई हैव 10 इयर्स ऑफ टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज आई टीच इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस एंड इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी एंड डेली एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर अलोंग विद द हिंदेप एनालिसिस ऑफ एडिटोरियल्स एंड आर्टिकल्स and this session will certainly help you to crack prelims and mains examinations because throughout my session i would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases which will certainly be useful for you both for prelims as well as mains examinations so thereby do get into the mode of emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases which will be useful for you both for prelims as well as mains examinations so definitely by imbibing the keywords and the key phrases the mains especially while you are going ahead with the answer writing so the answer writing in the mains will certainly you will score higher marks in the mains examinations when your answers are precise and concise and once your answers are precise and concise certainly you will score higher marks in the mains mains examinations so thereby my session that is my lecture will guide you to crack prelims and mains both for 2020 as well as 2021 and the topic for the day is united nation convention on international settlement agreement and it is also called as singapore agreement i would repeat once again the topic for the day it is united nations convention on international settlement agreement so we will focus in depth about the international settlement agreement which is the united nation convention as well as called as the singapore convention so we will look at the sub topics of the united nation convention isa that is international settlement agreements or the singapore convention we will look at about the singapore convention we will also focus on the features of the convention conditions for enforceable settlement agreements and the enforceable settlement agreements in india we will focus this also and then lastly we will conclude it so make sure that you all follow my lecture or this video and then make sure that you are viewing this video completely so that you will have a in depth understanding about the united nation convention on international settlement and agreements which will be certainly useful for prelims as well as mains examinations so do follow complete video and now we'll focus the what is singapore convention so when we are looking at what is singapore convention it is actually the united nations convention on international settlement and agreement which results from mediation so this is an agreement which is through mediation and that mediation of united nation convention is also referred or called as singapore convention and it was adopted by the united nations on june 26 that is in the year 2018 so the singapore convention or united nation convention isa through the mediation has been adopted by the united nations on june 26 2018 and this convention if we call if you can take it into consideration as the in the entire topic we will refer this united nation convention on international settlement and agreements as singapore convention so the singapore convention was opened for signature and it was signed by 46 countries on august 7 2019 signatures were signed on 2019 by 46 countries and definitely the singapore convention is intended to be the game changer why that it will be acting as a alternative dispute resolution it will be acting as a alternative dispute resolution dispute resolution and this singapore convention on mediation has come into force on september 12 2020 so if you look at the years which are very important in regards of singapore convention is when it was adopt, adopted in the year 2018 and it was signed in the year 2019 and it has come into force in the year 2020 and definitely the singapore convention it facilitates the recognition and enforcement that the settlement agreements should meet the conditions so definitely here 
there are facilitations which are provided by the Singapore Conventions wherein the settlement agreement should meet the conditions which are mandated, mandated which is similar to New York Convention and that New York Convention is also referred as Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards is also called as New York Convention. So, Singapore Convention facilitates which among the following conventions? It is New York Conventions or United Nations Convence, Convention on International Settlement Agreements also facilitates the recognition and enforcement of settlement agreements to what? To Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards. So, this could be an important piece of information that Singapore Convention facilitates which among the conventions. So, it is Singapore Convention and New York Convention. And it is also known as, as we discussed, United Nations Convention on International Settlement Agreement. And this is the first United Nations Treaty to be named after a country's name of the country that is Singapore. So, this is the keyword which is also important for prelims perspective. So, the first United Nations Convention or the treaty which is named after a country name of the country that is Singapore. And now we will focus the features of the Singapore Conventions. So, the features if you look at definitely the Singapore Convention provides a more effective way. So, it provides more effective way for what? For enforcing the mediated settlements. So, it enforces in an effective way the mediated settlements for the corporate disputes. So, the disputes which are arise in the corporates, it will be settled in a very effective manner by mediating and that is the feature of the Singapore Convention. And it could be the disputes which are involved in the businesses, both it could be in India or any other countries. But those countries which are signatories, which are the party to the Singapore Convention, only they can be part of the corporate dispute mechanism. And the other feature of the Singapore Convention is, it will definitely save the time and it will save the legal cost. So, this is the keyword. The Singapore Convention Advention is, as it is harmonized and simplified, so it has a harmonized and simplified framework for that there would be certainly savings in time and also the saving in regards to the legal cost of the countries which are part of the or the corporates which are part of the signatory of the Singapore Convention. And the other future is that it will boost India's ease of doing business. So, this is the vital one for India which will be beneficial that once we are signatory to the Singapore Convention. So, certainly it will boost India's ease of doing business credentials so that there would be swift, swift in the sense fast, fast mediated settlements by the corporate so that if there are any corporate disputes which arises in the due course of the business, the foreign investors, so that can be settled and there would be, it would be boosting India's ease of doing business credentials. And not only that, if you look at the other side of it is why Singapore has, I mean why the United Nations Treaty has been named for the first time on the name of the country that is Singapore because it has worked with United Member States and it has also worked with few non-government and organizations along with the United Nations Co Commission on International Trade Law. So definitely it is the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law, it has worked and it has worked with United Nations member states and various non-governmental organizations. That is why it is very, very closely associated with the name what we have also said that it is a Singapore Convention. And this convention, when it comes into force, definitely the businesses which are seeking for the mediated settlement agreement across the border, that is various countries, they can apply directly to the courts that have signed and ratified. So, definitely the, it, the Singapore Convention provides a salient feature that is the 
the corporates or the businesses which are having the settlement agreements or the disputes which are as arise across the countries in different parts of the world they can directly approach the courts of the countries if they have signed and ratified the treaty earlier what it was earlier it was that the settlement agreement was treated as a contract and it was resolved in each country's domestic process so this is the most important point that they can directly apply they can directly apply to the courts of the countries once they have signed or ratified the singapore convention but earlier it was as a it was settled as an agreement as a contract in each country's domestic process and as on september 1st as on september 1st the convention that is singapore convention has 53 signatories along with india china and us and when we look at the what are the conditions for enforceable settlement of agreement so definitely there are few conditions wherein the settlement agreements would be enforceable settlement agreements would be enforceable so there are few conditions so what are those conditions in regards to the singapore convention so whenever we are talking about the conditions the agreement must be in writing and it must arise out of a mediation which is defined under the convention and the dispute should certainly be a commercial dispute it should not be an individual or a personal one because it cannot relate to personal family or household it should definitely be a commercial dispute that is the condition along with there should be a mediation and it should be in writing and neither it should it can it cannot be a family or inheritance or a employment law pertaining to it that cannot be taken it as a settlement agreement which can be enforceable under singapore convention and the settlement agreement must be international must be international in particular and this does not apply to a settlement agreement which is approved which is already approved by a court or which is concluded in a court or whether there is a recorded session which is going enforceable through an arbitral awards so if it is approved in a court it is concluded in a court or it is recorded in a court and the arbitral awards are being taken up in particular countries domestic courts they are not part of the conditions only condition is in writing it should be arising out of the meditation it should be a commercial dispute and it should be an international that is settlement agreement must be international and we will look at the enforcement of settlement agreements in india this is again very important keyword there could be a possibility a question can be framed in the prelims asking not about the singapore convention but on the sidelines of the Sing singapore convention in regards to the international settlement agreements on the sidelines of the international settlement agreement there could be a question that what are the settlement agreements in india which are enforceable so this we will focus and you as a civil servant aspects will definitely be benefited by this information so the one in india are section 81 of 89 of 1 of code of civil procedure of 1908 so it provides for what code referred mediation and conciliation so here code of civil procedure 1908 is the first one and the second one is the part 3 of the indian arbitration and conciliation act 1996 so this is the second one which wherein this indian arbitration and conciliation act 1996 deals with the conciliation deals with the conciliation between the parties between the parties and you have the other one that is the settlement agreements in india that is the civil procedure alternative dispute resolution and mediation rules 2006 so this is the third one so it is the alternative dispute resolution adr mr or adr rules you can say which was framed by bombay high court so this again can be a useful information for preliminary upsc perspective point of view and here if you look at focus very clearly this 
ADR that is Civil Procedure Alternative Dispute Resolution and Mediation Rules 2006 which is been framed by Bombay High Court. It provides for settlement by conciliation and settlement by mediation. Look at it. But if you look at the part 3 of the Indian Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996, it provides only conciliation. Here you have the conciliation and mediation the way you had it in the 1908. It is mediation and conciliation. So this is the major difference between the 1996 arbitration, Indian Arbitration and Conciliation Act and the Alternative Dispute Resolution and Mediation Rules 2006 framed by Bombay High Court. And now if the conclusion part if you come out. So definitely the settlement ag agreements can be arrived through a conciliation and it can be enforced in India. It can be arrived through a conciliation and it can be enforced in India by the part 3 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act which we have discussed. And these those agreements can be concluded through mediation or any consultative process. So here it is through mediation or consultative process could only be enforced as contracts. Look at it only as contracts because even before Singapore Convention the international dispute mechanism or the corporate disputes were taken up in each country as a domestic contract, domestic contract only in the courts. So it can be taken as a contract by filing separate legal proceedings in that regard. So here, so definitely it is the gaps which we do have it in regards to the settlement agreements. And now because of the Singapore Convention which has come into force, so definitely it will fill the gaps in the settlement agreements which are enforceable in India. This is the main point. And I hope this session or the topic was useful, informative and which could be very, very piece of information which could be very important for prelims as well as mains examination. So I would say a big thank you and a good luck to you all for the examinations and I would like you to share, subscribe and like the video before you sign off. That is the Synthesis IAS Academy wherein the blend of ideas do take place. And then see you again tomorrow with a new topic which will be certainly useful for you for the prelims as well as mains examination. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then I'll see you with the next topic.